Hello and salutations, my name is John Johnson, and welcome to another episode of The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap. In the last episode, we found out what kinstones were, got a heart piece, and... That was about it. Oh, and we called some chickens, too. I guess we did do that. But, you know, normal stuff, normal Zelda stuff. And I actually I falsely said that we were going to be heading to these twigs of death and doom instruction. Uh, but that was a lie, however. We're not going to do that. That was stupid of me to say. Yes, quite, quite stupid indeed. What we're actually gonna do is come over here, back in the Hyrule town. Still a town, not a village. And head over to the, nope, not that way. Head all the way up here. Here. And to the left, where we will find a lovely guard here blocking our path. Kind of a D-bag, really. Whoa, so you've learned the spin attack. It's still dangerous, but maybe you can handle it. Well, let's see how you do, how you do. Show me the spin attack. So we gotta show him the spin attack. If you come and talk to him before you learn said spin attack from Mr. Switcheroo-dee-doo down there in South Hyrule Town, he will not let you by, so... Kind of a little thing they do to make sure you learn it. Alright, here we have some, some new enemies I don't remember the name of, so I'm not gonna bother talking about them. Two hits and they're dead. No harm, no foul. <laughs> Alright, so let's come down here. Uh, listen to that, listen to that lovely, lovely cave music. Awesome. So we're gonna f use our newfound bombs to, uh, to blow this here very obvious crack in the wall. Or crack wall, I should say. Blow it up, walk in, and... Very familiar Zelda enemy, a business shrub. Simply reflect the, the Deku nut they shoot at you back, and they will kind of back off. Which, we've already fought one of these, what am I even explaining it for? You got me, let me make it up to you. So he's gonna show, uh, sell us a bottle for only 20 rubies. Now that is a very good deal and one we need to take. And trust me, you're gonna want to do this before heading over to Mount Popcorn, Colonel, whatever, Creenal. I do know the actual name of it, just for the record. I'm just ignoring it because it's funnier that way. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So now we got the bottle, we can head on up here. Screw you, Octorok. Nobody loves you. You can go swimming. So there. I'm gonna pick up this random rock for no apparent reason. Just because I feel like I can't do nothing there. Just want to know what was up there real quick. So here you are at Mount Popcorn's base. Wonderful. Wunderbar. Uh, first things first. As you can see, there is another rather obvious bombable raw, wall. Rawl. Why do I keep saying rawl? Bombable wall here. Go in here and we have yet another business room and some awesome cave music. Beat him the same way you do every business room. Wait, business room? Business shrub. What is wrong with me today? A friend of mine in the cave in South Tribble here had a handy tool. Yeah, yeah. So he's telling us that if we want to climb, climb Mount, Mount Popcorn, if we want to climb Mount Popcorn, then uh, we need to get the empty bottles. So he's telling us we need to go talk to his friend, which we already did, so we don't do that. And uh, here, conveniently, is 20 rubies in case you don't have it when the guy tells you that, and you have to go, go buy it. Yeah. Good game design there. Good game design. So we need the bottle here for this very specific reason. We can put some water in it. Sprinkle it on this here sprout, and woohoo! With the Mario sound effect, it grows right on up. Good, good stuff, good stuff. So we're already clowning, cl clowning, cl climbing, climbing, English, English, John, do you speak it? For those of you that have seen Pulp Fiction, that's a, that's a good movie, it's a good movie. Everybody needs to see that movie at least once. Although if you're a kid, don't watch that movie yet. For various reasons. Wait until you're 18, then watch that movie. You'll, you won't regret it. Alright. These bombs are so slow in this game, I've noticed. Here we have yet another fairy fountain, which normally I would put one of these here fairies in a bottle, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Not right now, because we're gonna actually have to use this bottle again here, coming up pretty soon. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. So these little, little clumps of dust you're seeing me uh, pick up, they're actually quite dangerous, because you can walk into them, and you can see how fast my health drained there. Yeah, it doesn't take much for these things to kill you, so be super careful around these little cotton balls of doom and destruction and death and disease. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna come over here, and a little Zelda, Zelda trick that most of you probably know if you've played through a Zelda game, especially the, the handheld, the 2D one, 2D ones. If you put your sword out, you walk up next to a wall, you hear that ting? Ding, ding, ding. Alright, remember that noise? Now come over here. Yeah, it's a little bit different, ain't it? Yeah, yeah! Obviously, that little different sound means that you can blow this up. And it's pretty obvious in the first place because you have the rocks and the posts kind of surrounding it. Uh, which also interesting fact. For some reason, I'm uh, and I was looking through I was looking through a video of this the other day, 
and uh, they got to this part right here, and these two rocks that are on the side, this one on the right was actually a sign. I'm not sure why my, my game version does not have a sign there and has a rock. I guess it may be an, an earlier or later version or something. But just a little weird fact to hang out, to, to hang out, to point out. That's what I meant to say. But I did not say that, because that's just weird. It's the kind of guy I am, I guess. Alright, so here we have some red choo-choos, which I don't think we've ever fought before, but there's really not much difference between them and the green ones. So you just gotta take them out real easily. No problem. Climb up the ladder here. Yeah. And at the top of this ladder, we have, first off, a bombable rock, and luckily we only have one bomb left, and that's just how many we need. Good, good for us. Good for us for being prepared and what have you. Alright, so we can jump up here on this rock, shrink down real quickly. Okay. Stop dancing on my head, Elmo, Ezlo, whatever your name is. Uh, we can't skip this little cutscene because it's a new, uh, transformer. Or that meets the eye. Uh, because it's a new, whatever, portal. There you go, that's the word I was looking for. So this perfectly normal looking stone was another portal in Minish World. I suppose I would have remembered that if I stopped that. Well, you, you've been just so full of usefulness, Ezlo. Really though, why are you even here? You're not helping me hardly at all throughout this entire thing. Ah, Lady Bug of Death. Oh, Ezlo. You and your ultimate uselessness. So here we have some very special spring water. The popcorn hot spring water. That sounds like a brand name if I ever heard one. We put it in our bottle, it's piping hot. Yay. Now I'm not entirely sure if this will, uh, and those of you that have played Majora's Mask or other Zelda games, uh, we'll know that usually when they have hot spring water involved, it will cool down after a certain amount of time. I don't actually know if the, if it will cool down uh, in this game. I don't think it's ever taken me that long to uh, to use it. Uh, but, you know, being with the LP curse and all that, which is very real for those of you doubting it, trust me. Try LPing and see if it doesn't happen to you. Uh, but for those, uh, blah blah blah, what was I about to say? I don't have any bombs! Oh no! Oh no! Uh, I do believe that if you bomb this wall here, uh, there's another business scrub, business room, as it were, that will sell you bombs, ironically enough. Oh, no, no. There I am. I got that backwards. This one will sell you bombs. Yeah, I got you. Ten bombs. Yeah, yeah. So if you run out of bombs like I did, again, good game design. They just had you taken care of right here. Lovely. Lovely people who designed the Zelda games. They really know what they're doing, even though this one was outsourced to Capcom, more or less. Still... You know, they, they made a good game. You gotta give it to them. You know, a lot of people complain about some of the uh, the handheld Zeldas being outsourced to other developers. But they do a good job when you think about it. They really do. You know, Minish Cap is a really good game. Uh, oh, I almost killed myself there. Minish Cap is a really good game. There are other uh, handheld Zelda games that have been outsourced. I think the only outsourced Zelda game that can't be at least, can't be classified as at least a little bit good would be the CDI Zeldas. Which are just, just absolute nightmares. <laughs> Although, I will say they have been uh, garnering a bit of a cult following here lately. Uh, what? Yeah, I know how to beat the stupid t the Helmasars, man. I just did it. You told me after I did it. You stupid hat. Ugh. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, some of the, the outsourced Zelda games have been garnishing a bit of a following lately, which is, I see, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, I almost escaped. I uh, barely almost escaped that. What? English. Apparently, this is the fail at English episode. Who am I kidding? Every episode is the fail at English episode. Hey! Get back here. I want to kill you. You've really done nothing wrong to me yet, but you bother me, so I'm gonna kill you. Alright. So, now we're up here. At this little ledge right here. First off, we can kill this little red juicer so he doesn't get in our way. And then we have a new mechanic. Which Ezlo will explain now. Hmm! Of course, how silly of me! My boy, jump into that vortex over there for me. I've, that was weird, weird, weird uh, sentence pacing there. I think I've got an idea. Oh, yay. Your ideas are so wonderful, Ezlo. That was actually a pretty good idea there, Ezlo. P appreciate it, appreciate it. So, a neat little mechanic there is you can use Ezlo as a parachute and kind of glide on to places that you could not before. It's a cool little thing. It's a cool little thing. We're going to suck these out of the way just so they don't get in my way because I have a feeling they will. I'm not gonna lie, I actually died to these things before, these little cotton balls of death and doom destruction. And I need to stop saying that, because it's ripping off another LP here. I don't like doing that. Yeah. So we're gonna head up here, and... Oh, hey, look! It's a, it's nothing. It's just a blank wall. Uh, geez, I wonder what it could ever be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they're pretty obvious with the bomb bombable walls in this game, at least for the most part. I do believe there are one or two that are pretty well hidden, but for the most part, they're pretty easy. Alright, here we got three of these little cracked wall, uh, cracked blocks that we can take care of. And we got a blue kinstone. Yay. 50 rubies. Yay. Wait for it. It'll be the heart. Now you got to be collecting monkey all over it. And dr drown, Link, really. That's how you celebrate? By drowning yourself? You need help, man. That's That's got to be some kind of psychological problem there. Alright, so let's continue on. Going up, going up, going up, going up. Climbing the mountain, that's what we're doing here. Climbing the mountain, popcorn, popcorn. Haha, <laughs> the flowers are a little bitty and I can destroy them. Ooh, they give me hearts. Yay. Ha <laughs> Oh, hey. What is that? I'm not, I'm not acting at this point. I really don't know what this is. I didn't uncover it in my practice file. Huh. Oh, I bet you gotta be small. Okay. So, we're gonna do a little bit of adventuring in this episode, apparently. Because I really have no idea what that little cracked hole is. I didn't uncover that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we got the portal. We can jump in it. And, uh, before we fall in that hole, since I don't actually know what's down there, we're going to come over here. And just see what's over here in this little hole. Get out of the way, fly. Shoe fly, don't bother me. They really are quite bothersome when you think about it. In all honesty. Especially because they're kind of, like, I don't know, their positioning on screen is a little odd. A little odd. So they can be kind of hard to, to see where they are there. All that for a kinstone, please. That's a, a please. A kinstone piece. A kinstone piece. But that's okay, because we need a bunch of those anyways. I mentioned in the uh, the last episode, I believe it was the last episode, that uh, I am going to get all the pieces of heart and everything that's... Oh, fall in the hole. Everything that's really important with the kinstone pieces, but I'm probably not going to get every single kinstone piece you can. Mostly because a lot of them come out of grass and other stuff you can cut. And those just aren't necessary, you know? So let's find out what's down this hole. Oh, hey! It's a little minish. Water is life for crinal beans. The blue beans grow when you pour water on them, but the green beans like crinal hot spring. Ah! So he's, expl he's explaining now that we gotta get the hot spring water. Oh, and he got a red kinstone piece. Awesome! Cool! That was not in the video I watched for this. Oh, no, don't, don't go back down. He's cute and everything, but we got, <clears throat> we got stuff to do, Link. Come on. So that's cool. So he's just explaining that this, uh, this green bean here. Heh, <laughs> green bean. Uh that we're about to go pick up to progress, we have to actually have the hot spring water to do this, and not just normal. One. So, even though we're really tiny, for some reason we can lift this above our heads like it's nothing. I guess Link, like, preserves his normal human strength, even though he's the size of a uh, pinhead. I don't know. I don't know what the, the, the mental processing behind that is, but either way, we can pick it up and come put it over here. Fall down the hole. And after we do that, come over, huh? Put ourselves all big again. Wait for it. There we go. That was weird. I don't know why I did that, but whatever. And we'll just take out our spring water, which luckily is still hot. Pour it on there. There we go. And here we are at the actual Mount Popcorn, Mount Kernel. Current Carmen Carmel. Mount Carmel Apple. I'm just gonna start naming this mountain after different food items. What do you have to say, Sign? Crinal Wall, Crinal Mine. Okay, okay. So we're just kind of getting our bearings here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is head over here to the right and explore a little bit. I'm not too worried about all these enemies and all that. They're enemies. You've seen them all before. You know what they do. Uh, except for this stupid red tech type. Ugh. Going back to my Majora's Mask let's play. Who loves the tech type? Nobody loves the tech type. We are running low on bombs once again, but hopefully that problem will be solved fairly soon. Hopefully. Alright, more choo-choos, and dress chest, no harm, no foul, go, ah, choo-choo. Choo-choo, you need to choo-choo your way on out here like a train. Yes, that was stupid, I don't care. Oh wow, we're already up to 15 minutes on this. I was not expecting to go by this fast. Here, this may be kind of a long episode. Oh well, you guys will enjoy it, I'm sure. Yay, we got more bombs finally, so we can blow these up. So we have a new enemy here, the, uh, the gray choo-choos, or spike choo-choos as I always call them. 
Uh, basically, as soon as you get close to them, they'll just shoot out some spikes like you're seeing there, obviously. Uh, they're not super, super dangerous or anything. You hit them with two uh, two hits of your sword will kill them if they don't have their spikes out. You can also uh, hit them with bombs as well, but honestly, I kind of feel like that's a waste of bombs, to be perfectly fair. So we're going to use our, our newfangled parachute ability to come over here. More annoying tech types. Hate you guys. Everybody hates you guys. Ugh. Alright, there's nothing over here to the left that we can do right now, or at least not for a second. So we're gonna climb this ladder here. Cause there's something important that we need to do. Uh, does not include that. Uh, more enemies, skip on by. Oh god! Skip on by the enemies. No harm, no foul. Shortcut at the bottom, yeah. Get out of the way, Piat. Alright, we're gonna blow up this wall. Ah! Uh, and try not to get killed by freaking tech types and pea hats everywhere. God. And yet another business room. Apparently, the the Mount Popcorn Caramel Apple is a very popular place for business people. Fabulous grip ring. So we get a new item already in this episode. Awesome. Climbing style for only 40 rubies. Well, luckily for us, we found that 50 ruby earlier, which gives us way more than enough to actually get this. Awesome. So let's cut down the grass and see if we can get some more bomb stuff. Because I want to stay stocked up on bombs. I really, really do, because bombs are very important. There are plenty of bombs in here. There we go. Alright, so now we got that, we can actually head back this way. Past all the pea hats and the tech tights and all that annoying crap. And uh, actually, before we go up there, let me see what's up here first. Not crap, okay. That's not important right now, we're not gonna worry about it. So let's go back down, and this time, we can not actually go left. As soon as we get down here, we can jump down a ledge, kill the tech tight. Get out of the way, tech tight, nobody loves you. Ooh. Seriously, all you guys need to just die. Maybe the- Ah, oh, I killed the sign. I wanted to read the sign. Alright, yeah. Alright, I wasn't actually- I wasn't actually sure if that was a bomb or wall or not, so I had to check. See, the little noise thing comes in handy. But yeah, we can come in here in this. And looky there! Yet another piece of art. And this time, we can actually get one of these here fairies. You caught a fairy in your bottle. This wing friend will come to your aid if your life energy is depleted. How wonderful. You got a bit of hunt, and you're not too glad that one might your life in here. Yeah. Those things are just... Okay, every time we get a heart piece, my goal is just to get weirder and weirder with how I say it. Just so you guys know what, what you're in store for. <laughs> so now that we got the grip 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 ring, we can actually climb these little walk rolls. Rock rolls. I don't know why I keep saying wall. It's not my natural accent. I have no idea why I do that. I'm only doing it while I'm recording for some reason. It's weird. I am a weird individual, as you all all are probably sure aware. No bomb throwing. Oh, jeez, I wonder if that means we're supposed to do. Uh, I'm just going to put a bomb right here and walk away. Nah, 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 nah. Don't expect anything to happen. Oh, look, a, bom a bombable secret. Who saw that one coming? Okay, so here we got a nice little callback to A Link to the Past. Uh, mostly A Link to the Past, anyways. It, it has been in other games, I do believe. But basically, you throw an item in here. In this case, bombs. And a beautiful, beautiful fairy will pop out. Look at it. The, the fairies in this game really are quite gorgeous looking. Look at it. Even for a sprite, that's pretty good looking. Welcome to the Adventure Spring. Okay. Did you throw the golden bomb into the spring or the silver bomb? Well, that the, both of those things sound pretty good, and I'd like to have both of them back. But I'm an honest person, you know? I gotta go with neither on this one. It was just a regular bomb, lady. You are honest. Well, thank you. I try. I am the hero, after all. I must reward such an honest adventurer with some of my power. Oh! Thank you. You got a big bomb bag. Now you can carry my- Okay. It's awesome that you gave me the big bomb bag and all that, and your farewell, and your crest, and all blah, blah, blah. I don't really see how a bigger bomb bag can be considered a power. You know, power kind of gives way to the thought of, like, you know, shooting laser beams out of your eyes, or having instant healing controlling weather. That kind of thing seems like a power. Having an item does not necessarily seem like a power. You know what I mean? I think your, your definition there may be a little messed up, lady. But, you did help me out and you gave me a bigger bomb bag, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault you for it. Nah, I feel like being nice to you. Because why not? Oh, God. Right, those things are really annoying. And here we have another new enemy, kind of. It's a uh, blue tektite. Uh, we're not actually gonna head down there because there's nothing we can do there yet. Uh, blue tektites are just a little bit stronger than the normal ones. That's the only difference there. Nothing major. So what we're gonna do here is flip our crust across here, and all of a sudden it starts raining. 
and the music changes to that awesome classic Zelda music. Uh, I feel like I'm playing A Link to the Past. I love it! I really, like, okay. For, uh, those of you, oh, well, what do you want, El Elmo? These raindrops kind of like, yeah, okay. So this part's a little, it looks a lot more dangerous than it actually is. Uh, honestly, the boulders falling in the cliff when you're climbing it is a lot more dangerous than this is. Pretty easy to dodge. Uh, what I was saying is, for those of you that know me, or for those of you that, even those of you that don't really know me that well, or have watched me that much, probably already know that, uh, Legend of Zelda is one of my favorite series in video game history. And a big part of that is actually, uh, the music. I am a, you know, I am a musician and have been for years. And, uh, okay, ooh, I almost screwed that up. <laughs> and The Legend of Zelda was a major influence on me musically. Uh, I was actually going to school, to college, as a music major for composition. And a lot of people noted how a lot of my music actually sounded like, uh, video game music. More specifically, Zelda music. Which, you know, some people would take as an insult, but personally, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I love that people thought my, my music sounded like Zelda music. That was the biggest compliment you could possibly give me at that time. Or really, any time. Because Koji Kondo, specifically, was a massive influence on me musically. And, uh, just, not even just musically, just life-wise. And always has been. The music of Zelda has been a stand-there companion my entire life, and... Definitely something I, I identify with out of the series compared to anything else. But yeah, enough of that. So here we got some more Helmets R's, but they're pretty easily displaced with our super awesome Gust Jar. Get, get, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Jeez, okay. Those things can be really annoying if you don't take them out, so I highly suggest doing it. And here we have some, some more block puzzles that look a whole lot more complicated than they actually are. Now, I will say... Uh, this one actually tricked me up a little bit here, because I'd get all the way to the end, realize there's not much I can do except for that. You know, what, what a crap, what do I do now? And, uh, this actually got me, uh, in my practice file as well, because I didn't remember, but actually, you have to come over here, push that one like that, and did I screw up? I totally think I screwed up. I did, didn't I? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you have to push that one over there to the right down, which... Actually, it's pretty, pretty little clever trick there, Nintendo. You actually got me pretty good with that. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. I'm sure a lot of other people have fallen for it, too. Alright, so we can go over here. Forget the P-Hats, because who cares? They're just P-Hats. I don't worry about them. You shouldn't either. Ooh, this episode is gonna be long. Oh, well. Oh, well, said me. Alright. And yet another little clever thing here Nintendo does. Uh, you have to actually move these pots before you can come over here, because if you, uh, fling yourself off the shroom, if you shroom fling yourself, as it were, uh, even if you, you go way above the pipe, uh, the pots, not the pipes, you will still fall down in the pit because of the pipes, so, you know, not a nice little trick there, Nintendo. You're getting clever. I don't know if I like it, but you're getting clever. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I do like it. I love, I love clever, clever game mechanics like that. Alright, and swell, uh, swell little use of our sword there takes both of those red shoes out. Alright, so we can come up here and yet more block pushing. There's gonna be a, a whole heck of a ton of a lot of that. But we can push these out of the way. And in both of these, there are some bombs. We need both of those because there's a switch over here that we need the bombs for. The bombs! Yes, the bombs! The lovely bombs! Hit switch, bridge goes out. No harm, no foul. I really, like, don't even mean to say that when I say it anymore. I don't know if that's meant to become a catchphrase of mine or not, but I feel like it has. Which reminds me, actually, uh, uh somebody pointed out in the comments in, in the last episode that, uh, Nintendo Capri Sun actually said something about salutations at the end of his last video. I think it was, uh, Sa Pokemon Sapphire, I think it was episode 25 or something like that. Uh, <laughs> I actually got another message, not from the same person that commented, but I got a message asking if that was an intentional reference to me. I kinda doubt it. You know, I don't think I'm popular enough for, you know, Nintendo Capri Sun, he did, uh, he did actually comment on one of my videos a while back, which was awesome. You know, I can't tell you how much, how awesome that made me feel. But I don't think he, like, is a regular watcher of mine or anything like that, unfortunately. It would be awesome if he was. But I don't think he's actually watching all my videos or anything, so. Unfortunate, but still okay. You know, the fact that he actually found that one video of mine and, and liked it as much as he did was, was pretty awesome. And he actually sent a few subscribers my way from commenting on there, so if you ever hear from NCS, sup, good to have you, although you've been here for a while now, because that was before 
Hey, Blue Kinstone, yay. That was before, uh, before Yoshi's Island finale, even. So that's been a while. Ooh, that has been a while. That's weird that it's been that long. Yay, shrink down, no problem. Alright, so we're getting close to the end of this episode here. We're just gonna come knock through these ladybugs, which I don't really feel like killing all of them, so I'm just gonna run by them. Goodbye, ladybugs of doom. I don't really care about you. Alright, and here we are at Melory's Mine. Melory, as it were. No, his name's not Melory. That's like calling him Miller. <laughs> but uh, we're actually going to call it there. Thank you guys for watching today. As always, like if you like. Leave a comment. Tell me what I did right, what I did wrong. Subscribe, eh? If you want to see more and share with friends. I will see you next time on the next episode of The Legend of Zelda, The Minute Cap. Thank you guys for watching. Share with friends. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Bye.